My son! Oh, where have thou been? Father, I deeply apologize, for I have done something greatly wrong. For what could you have done? I raised you to never do such things. I was tempted. <coughs> I saw the horrible deed in front of me, and I could not resist. Please, oh, Father, forgive me for what I have done to, dis to disrespect our family and our home. You say this temptation was a horrible deed, but my good son, how could you do something <coughs> in such disrespect? I... I stole. I wanted to give this token to Mother in celebration of her birthday. I could not find the money to purchase, but I saw the opportunity to take. I thought it would be a reasonable deed since it was not for me, but for the one that I love. Son, you know better than not take the things that are not given to you. You must return the stolen token immediately and go to the church and beg for forgiveness. But Father, I can't. I will receive more consequences if I show my face to the clerk. Then those consequences will be given and you will accept them. This is your fate due to your actions. Yes, Father. Excuse me, ma'am. Yes. I apologize deeply, but earlier today I took this chain from your shop. I wanted to give this to my mother for her birthday, but I do not have the money to purchase this beautiful item. Oh boy, how dare you take something from my shop? You should be thrown in a cell for what you have done. But I didn't, I didn't However, it. you've shown your face in this shop, carrying the responsibility of your action. That is very brave of such a young lad. Excuse me. I can tell the queen of your disrespectful task. I think you have gathered how immoral your actions have already been. Therefore, I will not turn you in. Really? Oh, my man, thank you so much. But you should thank, go to the church and pray for forgiveness for your sin. Know that not everyone will be as kind, and if you try such foolishness again, the consequences may be much worse. Pray to our queen, even if she doesn't truly know what you've done. Yes, my good lady. Absolutely, I will head to the church immediately and confess my sins and beg for forgiveness. Hmm. Oh, higher power, please forgive me for my terrible actions. I should have never stolen that small gem. I thought I was doing the right thing to honor my mother for her birthday, but I was wrong. I apologize greatly, especially to our queen, and will never do such a thing like that ever again. Hello, son. Did you as I told? Yes, father. The clerk was very disappointed, but forgave me and didn't punish me for my actions. But she told me not everyone will be as kind. She made me go to the church and repent for my sins. Did you? I did. I will never disrespect our family again, and I will only take the things that are given to me. God save the queen. God save the You tell me you wrote it. I know. Now I'm presenting a small excerpt from our play, Richard the Third. Welcome, sweet prince, to London to your chamber. Welcome, dear cousin, my thoughts sovereign. The weary way hath made you melancholy. Oh, no, uncle, but our crosses on the way have made it tedious, wearisome, and heavy. I want more uncles to welcome me. Sweet prince, the untainted virtue of your years hath not dived into the world's deceit. Nor more can you distinguish of a man than of his outward show, which God knows. Seldom or never jumpeth with the heart. Those uncles which you want were dangerous. Your grace attended to those sugared words, but looked not on the poison of their hearts. God keep you from them, and from, from such false friends. Oh, God keep me from false friends, but they were none. My lord, the mayor of London comes to greet you. 
I thank you, good my lord, and I thank you all. I thought my mother and my brother York would long ere have this have met us on the way. Fie, what a slug is Hastings that he comes not to tell us whether they will come or no. Say, Uncle Gloucester, if our brother come, where shall we sojourn till our coronation? Where it seems best unto your royal self, if I may counsel you some day or two. Your Highness shall repose you at the town, then where you please, and shall be thought most fit for your best health and recreation. Oh, I do not like the tower of any place. Did Julius Caesar build that place, my lord? He did, my gracious lord. Begin that place, which since succeeding ages have re-edified. Is it upon a record, or else reported successfully from ages to ages he built it? Upon record, my gracious lord. Oh, but say, my lord, it were not registered. Methinks the truth should live from age to age, as to a retail to all, pro all posterity, even to the general all-ending day. So wise, so young, they say do never live long. Oh, what say you, uncle? I say without, without characters, fame lives long. Thus, like the form of vice, iniquity, I moralize two meanings in one word. That Julius Caesar was a famous man, with what his valor did enrich his wit. His wit set down to make his valor live, death makes no conquest of this conqueror. For now he lives in fame, though not in life. I'll tell you what, my cousin Buckingham. What, my gracious lord? And if I live till I be a man, I'll win our ancient right in France again, or die a soldier as I lived a king. Short summers lightly have a forward spring. Now, in good time, here comes the Duke of York. Oh, Richard of York? How fares our loving brother? Oh, my dread lord, so I must call you now. Ay, brother, to our grief as it is yours. Too late he died that might have kept that title, which by his death hath lost much majesty. How fares our cousin, noble lord of York? I thank you, gentle uncle. Oh, my lord, you said that idle weeds are fast in growth. The prince, my brother, hath outgrown me far. He hath, my lord. <laughs> and therefore is he idle? Oh, my fair cousin, I must not say so. Then is he more beholding to you than I? He may command me as my sovereign, but you have power in me as my kinsman. I pray you, uncle, give me this dagger. My dagger, little cousin, with all my heart. Oh, a beggar, brother. Of my kind uncle that I know will give, and being but a toy which is no grief to give. A greater gift than that I'll give my cousin. A greater gift? Oh, that's the sword to it. A gentle cousin were it light enough. Oh, then I see. You will part but with light gifts. In weightier things you'll say a beggar nay. It is too heavy for your grace to wear. I wear it lightly, were it heavier. What, would you have my weapon, good lord? I would. That thank you, as you call me. How? Little. My lord of York will still be cross in talk. Uncle, your grace knows how to bear with him. You mean to bear me, not to bear with me. Uncle, my brother mocks both you and me. Because that I am little, like an ape, he thinks that you should bear me on your shoulders. <laughs> with what a sharp provided wit he reasons. To mitigate the scorn he's given his uncle, he prettily and aptly talks himself. So cunning and so young is wonderful. My lord, will please you pass along? Myself and my good cousin Buckingham will to your mother to entreat of her to meet you at the tower to welcome you. What, will you go unto the tower, my lord? My lord protector needs will have it so. I shall not sleep in quiet at the tower. Why? What should you fear? Mary, my uncle Clarence is angry ghost. My grandam told me he was murdered there. I fear no uncle's dead. Nor none that live, I hope. And if they live, I hope I need not fear. But come, my lord, and with a heavy heart, thinking on them, I go into the tower. Think you, my lord, this little prating York was not incensed by his subtle mother to taunt and scorn be thus appropriately? No doubt, no doubt. Oh, tis a parlous boy. Bold, quick, ingenious, forward, capable. He is all the mothers from the top to the toe. Well, let them rest. Come hither, Catesby. 
Thou art sworn as deeply to effect what we intend, as closely to conceal what we impart. Thou knowest our reasons urged upon the way. What thinkest thou? Is it not an easy matter to make William Lord Hastings of our mind for the installment of this noble duke in the seat royal of this famous isle? He, for his father's sake, so loves the prince that he will not be one to out against him. What thinkest thou then of Stanley? What will he? He will do all in all, and Hastings doth. Well, then, no more but to this. Go, gentle Catesby, and as it were off, sound thou, Lord Hastings, how doth he stand affected to our purpose, and summon him tomorrow to the tower, to sit upon the coronation. If thou dost find him tractable to us, encourage him, and show him all our reasons. If he be leaden, icy cold, unwilling, be thou so too, and so break off your talk, and give us notice of his inclination. For we tomorrow hold divided counsels, wherein thyself shalt highly be employed. Commend me to Lord William. Tell him, Catesby, his ancient knot of dangerous adversaries, tomorrow or let blood at Pomfret Castle. And bid my friend for joy of this good news. Give Mistress Shore one gentle kiss the more. Good Catesby, go. Affect this business soundly. My good lords, both, with all the heed I may. Shall we hear from you, Catesby, ere we sleep? We shall, my lord. At Crosby Place, there shall you find us both. Now, my lord, what shall we do? If we perceive Lord Hastings will not yield to our complaint. Chop off his head, man, somewhat we will do. And look, when I am king, claim thou of me the earldom of Hereford, and the movables, whereof the king my brother stood possessed. I'll claim that promise at your grace's hands. And look to have it yielded with all willingness. Come, let us sup the times, that afterwards we may digest our comforts in some form. Thank you. So, do we have time for an extra performance? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.